thank you so much to SVB for hosting us and indeed for everyone who's here this evening. I think this has got to be probably the most diverse audience I think I've ever seen at a, at a conference and I think it's a kind of testament to you all for, for showing up. So thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate you being here. So I've got various props. I've got a, two microphones, uh, a, a pad of notes, so you might have to bear with me in between slide changes. Um, but I'm Travis Wynn Stanley. I am an investor at the Catalyst Group. I actually invest in games day to day. And by night, <laughs> I'm a data crusader with Diversity VC. And uh, I'm not the only one on the team. Uh, this is the founding team at Diversity VC. So if you don't know us already, um, it's Czech, Lillian, Anna, Farouk, and myself. Um, all heading up to the various different bits of Diversity VC. But really, we're all sort of banded together around one common theme, which is to try and make a fairer and more diverse venture capital industry. And my responsibility is to head up the data project. I was a formerly an engineer, so numbers and all things scientific are my thing. And in the process of talking about diversity, realized that there was a real dearth of numbers in the industry. In fact, we did a data, uh, like a desk study um, last summer. And this was our light summer reading. Uh, we looked at 29 different academic reports and press clippings on a range of different subjects, as you see here, um, ranging from kind of uh, race and ethnicity through to gender and sexual orientation and so on, just to understand sort of how, one, the tech industry um, takes, uh, uh, addresses these sort of issues and problems and sees them, but two, also sort of kind of to really focus on the, the venture capital piece. Um, and the key conclusions for me was, firstly, how big the venture capital industry is and how much of an impact we have. That often in venture capital you're investing relatively small sums of money and yet we're responsible for some of the world's most transformative businesses. I'm just looking here at the 10 most valuable businesses by market cap in the world. And if you look at them, you've got five of them are all sort of owe their success to early stage venture funding. So we've got Apple, Alphabet, Microsoft, Amazon.com, Facebook, they're all sort of kind of tech giants. Um, and they're the products and services that we're all using every single day. The other interesting piece for me was the power and might of the UK. We are, have one of the largest tech ecosystems probably in the world. We are certainly in Europe the largest by value when it comes to venture capital investment. We certainly have the most unicorns of all European nations. So sort of the decision, decisions and um, investments that we make on a day-by-day -day basis have a real impact on the world around us. And then this was really interesting to me, was looking at uh, how gender affects the performance of those businesses. And this is a McKinsey report, Why Diversity Matters. And it shows that you're 15% more likely to outperform your homogeneous rivals if you have uh, a gender diverse company. Which I think was really to kind of pause for thought for us as a data team and really to kind of laid the foundations for why we set up this report, which is to look into women in venture capital. And I think sort of that number, I'll just jump back to it. I think it sort of affects both the portfolio companies that we're investing in, but also affects us as investors that if we have more diverse investment teams, are we going to be making better decisions about the investments we're making? And are we going to see better returns for our own funds? And is this going to be greater for the whole ecosystem? And that was the real question that I want to get to the bottom of. So the, here's the report. We were very kindly supported by the BVCA. Um, now, I can't sort of kind of, haven't got enough hyperbole <laughs> to say how much I love the BBCA. Uh, GURPS is in the audience. We've got Tim Hames. Uh, we've got, uh, where's Nastasia? Over there, Martin. Um, all of, these, all of these folks were extremely supportive of us as an organization. And you also got to realize that we've only been going about a year. <laughs> so they took a huge leap of faith to, to kind of back what is essentially a startup, non-for-profit, people working in their evenings and weekends to do this piece of research. And I think the leap of faith they took was partly because of our partnership with Kraft. And I know Ilya's in the audience, I can't see him. Give us a wave. Um, definitely, uh, if, if you're an investor, go and chat to William. He's definitely worth having a chat to. He's uh, currently, I think you're raising, are you, at the moment? 
always raising, always raising. So I'm sure you'd appreciate a conversation. Um, Kraft has done the large part of the heavy lifting on actually finding the numbers here. So Ilya, his team, he's got Kartik, he's got Avia, definitely in shout out, and there's a huge raft of other people sitting behind that organization. They have done a huge amount of heavy lifting and also given us the, the kind of the comprehensive scope that we've been able to see in this report. Another quick vote of thanks. Um, I've got a couple here, actually. Um, first is to the data team. So these are all investors from the in, uh, venture capital industry, as well as a couple of academics, who have assisted on this report. It's their time in evenings and weekends which has actually made this as comprehensive and as authoritative as we can make it. They've been calling up VC firms just to double check the numbers we've actually got are accurate and representative. And separately, we have a whole stack of thought leaders who have poured in all of their help and advice and uh, top level guidance in terms of making this as authoritative as we could. So here's our findings. We found that there are 160 active UK venture capital firms. And we found that there are over 1,500 people working in venture capital. And those are in sort of both investment and non-investment roles. Which for some is staggering in itself. That we know there's sort of a handful of the big names, but actually there's a huge, relatively grey industry, uh, black box as it were, sitting sort of behind the scenes. Um, and uh, they, uh, they're all sort of actively investing in sort of startups across the spectrum. And this is our key conclusion. We found that women are underrepresented in UK venture capital. If we look at the UK labour force, 47% of UK uh, labour force is made up of women. Whereas if we look at the entire VC ecosystem, we see that 27% of the overall VC labour force are women. Let's unpack that a little bit further and look at those who are on investment teams. So this is everyone from analyst all the way through to partner. And we actually see that the number of people on those teams, women on those teams actually drops from the overall VC figure. It drops down to 18%. So we see fewer people, fewer women in investment teams. And unpacking that one level further, if you look at those in decision-making roles, those who are at partner level or sort of, in, sort of managing director or equivalent, we see that 13% of those decision-makers are women, which is quite sobering. And even more sobering is this. A significant number of firms have no women representation at all. In fact, 48%, almost half, have no women on their investment team. And 66% have no women in their decision-making team. Which is incredibly sobering to think um, that we are at the forefront of what we think are the next most cutting edge, the most sort of future uh, sort of kind of businesses, and we don't really have fair representation on those teams. It's not all doom and gloom. I think there is sort of kind of reasons to be optimistic. And I certainly sort of from discussions with the community have heard that there's a lot of effort going on at the junior level to try and raise the number of women in analyst teams and with the hope and expectation that they'll flow through into a partner roles in due course. We've still got a long way to go, um, but we're seeing about 29% in junior roles and 25% in middle roles. And I think other reasons to be optimistic is the work that's being done by the wider community. Uh, folks like the, the BBCA um, are, have got a sort of a huge advocacy program going on. And there's also groups like Level 20 who are paving the way for us in private equity. They've done a huge amount of work into uh, mentoring schemes and uh, sort of laying the foundation for the whole discussion and, uh, that's going on. And so it's sort of using their frameworks and support and structures um, that we can actually move the, the debate forwards here in VC. Of course, a little bit of a, a shameless plug as well. <laughs> Diversity VC is doing its own bit too. And we've got Anna Buffetta, who's uh, leading up the, the Pathway uh, program at Diversity VC. She's encouraging more entrepreneurs or sort of women and uh, students and uh, sort of uh, professionals to come into the industry um, and encouraging them from greater diverse backgrounds. We have Lillian Lee, who's heading up the network, which is promoting the uh, sort of women in the industry, their opportunities and sort of opportunities to progress uh, to senior roles. And we have Farouk, who's heading up the ecosystem. So we're conscious that we're not just a bubble. <laughs> we have a huge impact on the world around us. And Farouk's heading up that initiative, talking to entrepreneurs and LPs. And this is our key challenge that we're setting down to the industry. We have identified there's a huge opportunity, um, there's a huge amount of momentum, um, but we really need to act together as an industry to really make significant change. 
And so our proposal is to get 20% in senior women roles, decision-making roles, by 2020. But I also want to say that it's not just about women. Um, there are other underrepresented groups um, that sort of potentially suffer from the same sort of systematic uh, prejudice, um, but also have um, a, a great sort of contribution to bring. And again, this is going back to the diversity, uh, why diversity matters report from McKinsey. It actually shows that ethnically diverse companies are 35% more likely to outperform than their homogenous rivals. So this, I think, is the next frontier. We're looking to continue our efforts across the industry, focusing on women as well as other underrepresented groups. So I think it's a super exciting road ahead. It's, sort of, it's our responsibility as investors to take the sort of mantle forwards. I think we have a great opportunity to shape the world around us. I think we have a great opportunity to invest in the businesses of the future. I hope we'll do so responsibly, but I also hope that in the process we'll see better returns both for ourselves and for society. Mm -hmm.